Hi, it's Rob Bryanton again, and it's June 6, 2008, and uh, today's video blog entry is called Local Reality Bites the Dust. I've quoted Vienna physicist Anton Zeelinger before in this blog. He's one of the leading proponents of the concept of information and reality being equivalent, which is a central idea to what we're talking about here. Now, the June 2008 issue of Seed Magazine has an article about the leading edge experiments he and his team at Ikoki, that's I-Q-O-Q-I, have been doing, which have been designed to answer one of the most basic questions about our reality. Let me quote from Joshua Robke's article in Seed Magazine. Quantum mechanics fundamentally concerns the way in which we observers connect to the universe we observe. The theory implies that when we measure particles and atoms, at least one of two long-held physical principles is untenable. Distant events do not affect one another, and properties we wish to observe exist before our measurements. One of these, locality or realism, must be fundamentally incorrect. Or both might be incorrect, the article goes on to remind us. Regular readers of my blog or my book will see this as related to the basic ideas I've been exploring with this project. For me, the question becomes this. Is the future fluid, undetermined until we observe it? Plus, I believe time reversal symmetry requires us to ask the same question in the other direction. Is the past just as fluid as the future? In other words, is there only one single path that we could have traveled to get to our current now, or are there many? I've quoted Feynman's sum over paths concept many times as evidence that this multiple pasts and futures concept is true at the quantum level, and I've pointed to the David Deutsch team's proof published in September 2007 that the quantum and macro worlds are equivalent. Feynman and Deutsch are telling us something important when we combine those two ideas. In other words, I believe that branching parallel universes exist both before and after the current now that each of us is observing. So, while we might doggedly insist that the reality we observe exists before and after our ob observation, we have to accept that, exists, that it exists only as a part of a probabilistic ray, and not as a single concrete, that is to say, deterministic structure. Now, the evidence for non-locality is already proven in science labs with demonstrations of entanglement at increasingly greater distances, and not with just subatomic particles, but with molecules. I would say it is proven in our daily lives with intuition and empathy and with the connections of selfish memes and selfish genes, and with the way music communicates emotions across time and space. All of the possible expressions of the universe before and after the now of our observation are part of a probabilistic cloud of potential states, which I've talked about in entries before, uh, like the one called the Omniverse. Still, you might be surprised to learn that the Zeelinger team's experiments showed realism to be violated by, as it says in the article, 80 orders of magnitude, meaning that they have proved that we do actually create the classical world that we perceive just through the act of observation. Last year, a piece in Nature magazine about these same experiments entitled Physicists Bid Farewell to Reality quoted Dr. Zeelinger as follows. We do this all the time in daily life. For example, imagining what would have happened if you had tried to cross the road where a truck was coming. If the world around us behaved in the same way as a quantum system, then it would be meaningless even to imagine that alternative situation because there would be no way of defining what you mean by the road, the truck, or even you. In my blog entry, Time in Either Direction, I talked about Don, Dr. Sean Car Carroll's... Let me try that again. In my blog entry, Time in Either Direction, I talked about Dr. Sean Carroll's leading-edge theories on the asymmetry of time, and how nicely they tie into this way of imagining how our reality is constructed as well. As I discussed in The Fifth Dimension Isn't Magic, the key to all of this is finding a way to accept that the branching timelines of other realities exist as potential, even if they're not within the version of reality that we end up witnessing. My song, The Anthropic Viewpoint, 
sums it up with these words. All those other possibilities are just as real, but they don't have me. So we're going to finish today's video blog entry with that song, The Anthropic Viewpoint. Bye for now from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension Project. Because we're here, and if it were impossible.